get the purpose. God created you for a purpose, and that purpose must come to pass. Enough is enough. Stand up, leave them behind. Tell them I'm going somewhere. Somebody is holding a position on his right on a camp. Somebody here must go home with a blessing. I will overtake them. I will overtake them. Do you believe that? Shout hallelujah. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Behold, I give unto you power. Glory. I welcome you to the hour of grace. And the man preaching today is Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel. The man that has the power of God in his life. And I know that that word will set you free. Stay tuned. I'll be back again. Open your Bible. I found no fault in him. Look to the trail. We are about to look. Luke 23, verse 22 to 25. Reverend George, read. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I found no fourth cause of death in him. Are we therefore chasing him and let him go? And they were instant with loud voice requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of Dan and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for seduction and murder was cast into prison. Whom they have desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. Please, the word we read, or the word I'm speaking to you, is bigger than the preacher. Is greater than the preacher. How I wish I would go and sit down. Let him have his way. But who can stand If you don't mind, sit down and pay attention. Don't go the same way you come. I beseech you. I repeat what I said before. God sent me to serve you. And I will be glad that I finish this course with joy. Three lessons of life I will give you. I found no fault. Pilate said three times. The first one is in verse 4. Read. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. Yes. I find no fault. That is the first one. Second one, verse 12. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were an enmity between themselves. For then, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverts the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accused him. Second witness. I found no fault. Then the third one, verse 22. 
And he said unto them the third time, Why? Why? What evil has he done? What evil has he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I don't find any cause of death. Do you see the shifting of the world? The third time he made it clear, I found nothing to condemn him. No fault. No need of dying. Nothing will warrant it. I will quickly give you three lessons of life. I will leave you to be free. Pilate the third time said, This man you brought to me, I found no fault in him. Why should he die? There are no reason they will give than envy and the stubbornness. They don't want to see Jesus or hear him. Pilate said, I found no fault in him. Let me tell you, you that is hearing my voice, you may say you are the worst person. You may say because you come from a certain family, because of your background. You may say you have tried so much to succeed. No way to succeed. You may say they are after me. Tell me the reason. All the accusations you are receiving, heaven is saying, I find no fault in you. If you are in Jesus and Christ is in you, the eyes of the Almighty looking at you through the blood is saying, I find no fault. I want you to open your spirit and soul and to rejoice as you are hearing this word. Nothing will hinder you. Nothing will be a, a stumbling block. No matter what, I find no fault in you. Do you know upon all these accusations, they say, away with him, away with him. Let all the voices in Africa, all the voices in the whole world be against you. If God is with you, the heaven is safe. I find no fault in you. After accusing Jesus of so many things, at the end of the day, Jesus triumphed. How? They say, I went with him. Jesus said, when you lift me up, you will know whom I am. They killed him, crucified him, buried him, and then what happened? After 72 hours, the Son of God is up. He triumphed over them by his resurrection. Your hour has come. I found no fault in you. You are qualified to receive blessings from your God. You are qualified for your sins to be forgiven. Listen to me. You are qualified to make it to the kingdom of God. You are qualified to go about with ministering spirit angels. I find no fault. Condemn yourself as you like. God is not condemning you. They crucified him. 
<laughs> Before he was living, walking about, they accused him of so many things, but now that is the reason, he will die no more. You close your doors, you close your windows, he will come in. He is now exalted, glorified. Your life will never remain the same. Sister, I am speaking to you. Your accusers, we have nothing to accuse you anymore. My brother, you are trouble from your family or from your village. It's a peanut. The almighty Jesus, who rose again from the dead, has justified you. And the heavenly father pronounced, I found no fault in you. He will give his angels charge to serve you. I am here to make the announcement. I found no fault in you. Is somebody hearing me? The music has changed though. That is one lesson you must know in your life that Heavenly Father who spread the heaven like cotton. Heavenly Father that immortality that dwells in the light. Tell me the number of the angels, you know. Innumerable. Go to the church of firstborn. You can't count the angels. He that liveth and ruleth and reigneth forever is saying to you, He has found no fault in you. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, He will touch it. He will touch your business. Yeah. Hey! Those witches and wizards who shit upon your business, they will lick their shit. Yeah. That pronouncement they made against you will return back to them seven times. Yeah. Look at me. The word of God said, I fought in you. Who is that that will not condemn you? Huh? Take it. Take it. Cry no more. Listen. Listen now. Listen. Listen. Weather has changed. The next quarter. We are in the first quarter. The next quarter will be a turning point in your life. Because God will set up the machineries. Because he found no fault in you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I said, I give you three things. Listen to this second lesson. It's very important. I will now tell you the strategy of the devil. Even though there is no fault in you, even though you will receive from your God, there's Kaleg somewhere. And I will tell you that Kaleg. In the beginning of this year or, or last year or ending of last year, I give you a message. Say, destroy those altars. I want to take you back there so that you see the strategy of the devil. First King chapter 13, go back. Quickly, you will soon talk to God. But let God talk to you first. First King chapter 13. Listen attentively to the public reading of the word of God. 
from verse 6 to 31. George, read. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. Hey! You see, before you fall in your business, you are doing fine. Maybe so. Maybe. You will be better off now. Yeah. I am trusting God for the next quarter of this year. To the last quarter, there will be action and activities in your life. Yeah. Don't play with it, oh. Devil will go crazy. Devil will go haywire. But the more he back, the more our God will tame him. Yeah. Do you understand? Continue reading, Judge. And the king said unto the man of God, uh -huh. Come home with me. Mark it. Come and home. refresh thyself. And refresh yourself. And I will give thee a reward. <laughs> Go ahead. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thy house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way where thou comest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwell an old prophet in Bethel. Watch out. Watch out for that old thing. Watch out for that old prophet. Watch out for that old experience. Watch out. This is Caleb. If you can overcome this, you are true. Continue reading. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God has done that day in Bethel. The word which he has spoken unto the king, then they told all their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his son has seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the axe. So they saddled him the axe, and he rode thereon. And went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Are thou the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee, Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For it was said unto me by the word of the Lord. Thou by, by the word of the Lord on the line. Go ahead. Thou shalt not eat bread nor drink water there. Nor talk again to go by the way thou camest. He said unto him. I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Who spake to him? Who spake to the man of God? Huh? The word of God. And who spake to this old, old prophet? Mark it. Go ahead. Saying, Bring him back with thee in thy house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. The same person that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Toss, saith the Lord. For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but came as back and has eaten bread and drunk water in this place. Of which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he has eaten bread, after he has drunk, that he saddled for him the axe to wait for the prophet for whom he has brought him back. And when he has gone, 
a lion met him by the way. Who met him? Who met him? On the line. And slew him. And a carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by. And saw the carcass cast in the way. And the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. Stop there. It's okay. The man of God, no name but the man of God. Receive a message from the Lord, direct and free. Eat not, drink not. I send you a message, discharge and go home. Then came a terrible temptation. Be very careful about all things. Church, your future is not your trouble. Your tomorrow. No, it's never your trouble. Tomorrow cares for itself. Don't bother about your tomorrow. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. Your tomorrow is not your problem. You are today. What you are going through today is not a problem. And it's not new. Then what is your problem? What is the hindrance when God said, I found no fault in you? What is your problem then? It is your old, your past experience. That things of the past. Remember not the old things. Many of you came out from hatred, from bitterness, from bad friends, from bad habits. Take it again. Is the thing not coming back to you? From where comment all these things? From the old prophets. That your old girlfriend, your boyfriend, they are knocking at the door again. They paint their mouth. They paint their word and mesmerize you. That old things, you ask God to forgive you. Is it coming back? It is the old that will kill you, not the new. Your future is secured. For God is your God. He goes before you. Today, the Lord is your help in the present trouble. But those old things, the day God saved you, you did not die that day. Some of you have stayed two or three years in the Lord. Some of you five or six years or more. And the old habit begins to knock again. Can I give you some thing I have studied and proved? If you give your life to Jesus, if you have not given, get ready today. When you give your life to Jesus and Jesus comes in you, devil will give you, first of all, one year. Say so you will come back. Well, one year is gone. And you are still standing. <laughs> they will give he will give you three years. He will use every missile 
to finish you in, in your three years experience as a Christian and some Christian will say what is all these things since I believe instead of things going right it's going wrong things are not going fine for me there will be a preaching of the old prophet after three years and you are still standing he will give you seven years when you survive seven years you know that man that wicked man never tired he will give you 14 years when you survive 14 years <laughs> he will give you 21 years how do I know these things if you want to cancel and meet me personally some of you are 50 years maybe in the Lord or 50 years in life it's a dangerous year 50 is a number of power check it David was 50 years and devil got him this man called your enemy the devil old serpent he never tired but God is still maintaining his word he found no fault in you so the story goes as it, as it were the man of God disobeyed God and the old prophet met him and said unto him I'm a prophet like you this is not the first time people are saying that I am also a Christian like you I'm a preacher like you imitation and the man of, the, 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 the man of God said to him I will not go with you for the Lord said to me I will not eat or drink and the old prophet said unto him the angel of the Lord not God though, but the angel of the Lord came to me saying eat can I ask you a serious question God and his word and, and the angel which one is higher thank you that you see angel some people say angels Angel visited them. Angel spoke to me. I'm not doubting it. I've seen it. They are ministering spirits. They have ministered to me as a person. I won't lie. But if any angel from third heaven came to me and say anything that is not in the world let him be anathema maranatha I want you to know even in some prayer houses they will be singing and they will say here comes an angel with white dazzling white the other one say here comes another angel wearing black and the people will pray that that black one will disappear and they will sing songs 
Satan go away, go away. Satan go away, go away. My care will surely destroy you. It's okay. And when they were singing and clapping, motivational song. Do you know that one black angel, angel, seeing that the song is hot, he will move out. He will move outside the temple. Go outside. Stay outside and transform himself as angel of light. And come back again. That old serpent. He will come back again shining as angel of light. And the vision I will see him again. I begin to sing songs of praise. He has deceived them. No matter the angel, no matter who you are, if you are not speaking or talking according to the law, because there's no life in you, no light. Many of us, one way or the other, have been deceived. One way or the other, you have been deluded to believe lie. Thank God for the Bible. The integrity of life is in the Bible. And the, this man of God was deceived when the king said, when the old prophet said, angel came. And then what happened? He followed the, the old prophet to the house. And he ate and drank as they were dining, eating. The message came and said, Thus said the Lord. You are dying. For you have disobeyed the original command. Lion will devour you as you are going back. Like joke, like play. The man of God saddled the axe to go home. On the way, it's written there. What killed him? Lion. It's not for fancy. The man came from Judah. Young lion, I believe, came from Judah. But the surprising thing there is that the lion killed him and did not eat him. Just drop the carcass and stay by the side for a while. What prevents lion from eating him up? Church, I want to announce to you the word of God says God has power to kill and to make alive. Many Christians have, many Christians, they have died. It's not a question of hell and heaven. But because they have disobeyed lion of tribe of Judah, the owner of their life, terminated their life. Huh? Can God kill? Go and read your Bible. He has the power to kill and to make a life. He is the Lord, he changes not. This is how this man of God was terminated. But the body was not destroyed. That was the end. I don't know what would have happened if, if he has continued to obey God. My brother and my sister, there is a terrible consequences if you go back to your old life. 
Many of you have been struggling with the lust of the flesh. That boy, you have not abandoned him. That your girlfriend, you have not finished with her. That you are liquor, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are drinking. At times, you taste a little bit. Bible says, give a drink to the, to the perishing. You are hastening your perishing time. Your hatred, you if you see somebody that is terrible, I have discovered this among Christians. The hatred is growing like a haywire in their life. They say they forgive, you, but the thing is still there. If they see the person, if they if the person do anything, they will flare up. That terrible anger that has turned to wrath. And the wrath of man or woman worketh no righteousness. That you are wrath and anger, are you still retaining it? You're not doing anything about it. You say you are praying. Praying what? Forsake it. It has formed a stronghold. It may be hard for you to break. But you break it. Like Jehoshaphat. Singing praises and unto God. Let God take over. You cannot break that thing. It's a stronghold. That fornication spirit. You can break it. Give it over to God. I say it, I say this to the shame of the devil. A brother came to me and complained about homosexualism. He said he has tried and tried and tried to break this thing. It continued coming. I said, do you want to break it? He said, of course. When he said, of course, I looked at him. I say you don't mean it. Every day you mean it, you will see the answer. Don't pray a hypocritical prayer. You don't need to say too much. Just a decision. That brother continued. I told him, I said, listen, listen. If you do it next time, as I told you, something bad will happen to you. He chided me and he continued. The next time he did it, he was arrested. They beat him up. The police caught him up. And I was informed. I said, I can't do anything about it. It's a sin unto death. When you continue to hold that old sin, it will reach a time the lion will devour you. Is there anybody here hearing me? in your life I found no fault in him that is how this old uh, uh, man of God was deceived by old prophets what is that I will give you the third and final point I will let you pray the final point go back to Luke 23 Read verse 22 again. And he said unto them. He the, said unto them. The third time. The third time. Why? Why? What evil has he done? 
What evil has he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I would therefore chasten him and let him go. Who says so? Pronounce that name in full. Pontus, go by that name. Let me finish. His name is Pontius. Pilate. Don't neglect the meaning of name, so. As your name is, so you are. That's why I am so jealous about naming children a terrible name. Put idle name behind them. You don't know what you are doing. Let there be no shadow of idol in your house. Femi Ogun Simi Yabo Ogulana Godwin Osueke Do you know anything of Osueke? Osueke You're a slave to 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 seek to, to, to devil Huh? Snake Yes. You are a slave to snake. Us -ake. And I rejoice in it. My, my name is uh, John. John who? Us -ake. Josephine. Amadioha. Do you know what you are saying? Ask another person. My name is Nan de Caro. Caro is the name of thunder. It's an idol. Clean up. And you are carrying it here and there. Clean up. Let there be sanctification. I don't want any idol name to be in my family. Pontius Pilate. Pontius means man. A man from the water. A man from the sea who is in charge, if not marine spirit. Pilate means that weapon. The man from the sea and his weapon. What is the weapon of this man? A man, Pontius Pilate, is known by a man who sold his conscience. His conscience is telling him, I found no man, I found no fault in this man. And you are the governor, why not release him and turn the consequences? Because he came from marine areas. And they whipped him with that. He has no conscience. After saying, I found no fault in him. He still sentencing him, sentence him to death. Nobody today is answering Pontius Pilate. Nobody. Because it's a bad name. Why is it that people are not answering Judas Iscariot? Judas is a good name. Only. But because of what followed him, no more. Nobody. Pontius Pilate, a man who sold his conscience. I close. Bro, sister, don't tell me the greatest weapon or witness God put in you is your conscience. When you want to do something, your conscience will tell you this thing is bad. Still, you, you, you go ahead to do it. Doing it, doing it, you, have, you will have a seared conscience. You will not be moved. 
is gone. God said, uh, uh, the first time, I will give you up. Second time, I will give you up. Third time, I will give you over. You go with your reprobate mind. Do something about that thing that is weighing you down. Do something about it today. And God saying through the name of Jesus and the blessed Holy Spirit, Pilate pronounced, I found no fault in him. I finish. I want to tell you, as far as you come to Jesus, and with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Let the whole world accuse you. Let the whole world bring accusation and upon accusation upon you. The voice of the truth is saying, I find no fault in you. Who is that person here? Escape from that strategy. Don't go back to your old thing. Don't be deceived. And committing this church into the hand of God. And committing you into the hand of God. And your business will never suffer the same again. Yeah. I found no fault in you. Even though you are a tailor, even though you are an orange seller, people are telling you so many things. Even though you are, you are selling pap, whatever you are doing that is clean, and people are blaming you here and there I pronounce this morning I found no fault in you yeah. therefore you cannot die yeah. your business will not die yeah. your profession will not die yeah. if God is with you who will be against you to God be the glory You are welcome back. I know you enjoy the word. But without that word, your life is useless and hopeless. And you must use the word. If you are not born again, I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Because someday he's coming. And when he comes, if you are not born again, if you are not in him, you won't be there. And I want you to know that we love you and we care for you. I'll see you next week. Bye. Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, Tenant 12 Matik Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. Peace Outrage, reaching out to the troubled souls. Don't miss it. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. God has a plan for you, a plan to give you a bright future. Come and experience expository teachings and a powerful prophetic breakthrough service this Sunday. 
at Christian Pentecostal Mission International with God's anointed servants, Rev. Dr. O. Isikel, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercy Isikel, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator, and other anointed servants of God. Worship with us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. at Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street at Jawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. You can also worship with any CPM International branch close to you. It will be a time of salvation, healing, deliverance in the presence of God. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. Christian Pentecostal Mission, the power of God is here.